What is up, party people? <laughs> no, no, over here. Hi. Welcome back to another Roaming Reckless episode. I am your host, Maria. This is my dog, Blue, and we are living in my 1997 Land Rover Defender 110. Traveling the country, all 50 states. We're going to all 50 states, you know what I'm saying? 50 state road trip, that's what we're on. You should tune in because it's uh, it's wild, so. I got a lot to catch you guys up on because we have been roaming in these streets and I've been filming. Let's set up camp first though. <laughs> okay. Right now we're in Sedona, Arizona, and if you're like, wow, Maria, that was uh, kind of a quick drive from Moab, Utah, you're not wrong. Timber. Where is my fan? There you are. Stay right there, bud. Talking to a fan. Something really exciting is happening. Per my route planning, I was still supposed to be in Utah right now, but we got a really, really exciting opportunity to do a huge upgrade on Poe. And it's uh, something I really don't want to turn down. And so in order for me to do this huge upgrade, I kind of have to make my way south. That's why we're kind of, uh... I was trying to think of a clever word to say hustling our way down south, but it... Nothing came to me, so. <laughs> I am so geeked about it though, you guys. Um, you probably can put two and two together if you've been following me for a while. It's an upgrade that I've been wanting to do for a while. I had plans to do it later in the year, but everything just kind of worked out for it to happen now. So anyways, all of that to say, that's why we're in Sedona and not still in Utah. However, we will be looping back up to Utah. So if you feel like you didn't see enough of it, don't worry, don't fret. I do love Arizona though, so. Sedona's been great. It's one of my favorite places. Happy to be here. Happy to explore for the next few days. Bubby, are you happy to be in Red Rock Country for a few days? <laughs> okay, I'll take that as a yes. As a maybe. Oh, that's frozen. Well, that changes things. So what temperature exactly am I supposed to be setting this fridge at? <laughs> I kind of always just guess and I feel like my food is either frozen or just not cold enough. So it's kind of like, what am I doing wrong here? I was gonna make a salad, but my lettuce is frozen, so. I guess we'll have a veggie night. <sighs> You guys already know. Look at this health spread. Vegetable stir fry, mini peppers, cucumbers, some version of healthy ranch. And then for protein, I have venison jerky because- That's the vibe tonight. Ooh. The single best drink on planet Earth, besides Starbucks. Oh! You can't have my venison jerky. <laughs> Bubby, I'll feed you in like 20 minutes. I like to keep his feed times at the same time because we've been struggling with blue puking for a while, like a few months on and off, if you guys remember. And so I kind of like to keep Blue's schedule pretty strict because I'm trying to avoid him getting an upset stomach in the future. We're also trying out new foods right now, I'm trying to figure out what works for him. But I guess I can feed you a little early because you are being a menace. All right, go ahead. Good boy. What other news do I have for you guys? I feel like this episode is kind of like a catch up episode because so much has happened between the last time that I filmed and today. So when we were in Moab, we spent more time there. We did Corona Arch. If you remember in the last video you saw, we passed it and I said, Corona Arch. That's my favorite hike in all of Moab. We'll do that later, Bub. So Blue and I ended up hiking it and it was, uh, it was pretty cute. Oh, crap. And so it begins. You guys like my pizza socks? Fashion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Elevation gain. Love elevation gain. Come on. 
Corona Arch has been my favorite hike in Moab for years. And <laughs> we hike it every time we come here, but I'm on a mission today to get an Instagram picture of Blue right by the arch because I think it was five years ago. I got a picture of Blue at the arch. So we're here to recreate it today. The things we do for Instagram. Hey, those are cactus. Maybe not. Blue, are you ready to go up the ladder? The famous Corona Arch ladder. Are you ready? Look at this landscape though. There's just nothing like Utah. Places to go, things to see, arches to take pictures of. You know what I mean? Last time, Blue was like still really young, probably like two years old when we did this hike, so I feel like I did I carry you? What did I do? This is a very steep incline. Let's see if Blue can get it by himself. Now that you're older, come on. Come on. Good boy. Yeah, just follow the footsteps. You wanna go first? There you go. I guess the uh, pickle might be that ladder, but we got this boy. This seems sketchy. Unless I literally run, so. Time to send it. Okay, come on. You're taking the long way around. Why are you so smart? This dog. IQ level 200. Bobby, good job. You're so smart. So smart. You want a water break? There she is. I feel like we're almost to the point where we took the picture, so let's do this. Got your uh, modeling face on, Blue? Well, you have an eye booger. How embarrassing. <laughs> How embarrassing. Okay, look at me. Good. Let's go. Look at this arch. Do you even care? Bubby. It's like not the time for tug of war. Also, last episode, you guys saw us off roading a lot. <laughs> I broke one of the post seals. I did. I did break a swivel seal. My fault, not Poe's fault. That reminds me, we actually need to go fill it because it's been leaking for a few days. So let's go do that. Oh, oh ay, ay, ay. That leak is getting worse. Oh. Now we're cooking with gas. Sometimes you just give up and lay your entire head down in the dirt, you know? It's just one of those nights. Just gotta get some CD axle grease in here. Call it a day. Calling that good. The hands of a working man. Sometimes it's just like that, you guys. I feel like it got dark so quick today. Well, should we get in Poe? Come on, pup. Up, up, up. Good boy. I would like to quickly interrupt this vlog to bring you today's sponsor, Growot. Really quickly, if you guys are wondering what the heck this surrounding is and where we are and what rig and whose rig we're in, you're gonna have to wait till next video to figure that out. So just hang tight. And you might be thinking, Maria, another power station, but hear me out. 
Yes. <laughs> As you guys know, I use portable power stations daily. I have a jacker unit that is connected to a solar panel on my roof and it charges the unit as I go throughout the day. A power station is very, very lucrative for me and what I do. Living off grid, traveling full time out of a truck, I always have cameras, laptops, headphones, vacuums, fans. I always have things that need to be charged. You name it, if it's electronic, it needs to be charged. I probably own it and I'm charging it at some point. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's always on, it's always working. So Grow Out reached out to me and wanted me to just review their Infinity 1300 unit. I told them I would be brutally honest and they said to me, this will either be just as good as your current setup or better. Listen, I love the confidence. I told them to send it on over so I can see what all this hype is about, you know? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get into this review of the Infinity 1300. First, let's hit these specs. The output wattage on this unit is 1800 watts. That's gonna get you 20 cycles of charging a laptop, 96 cycles with a phone, or 117 cycles with a camera. 117 cycles with a camera. That's big news for me. You can also power a 20 watt speaker for 58 hours because who doesn't need to listen to Careless Whisper by George Michael for two and a half days straight? I know I do. Grow Out also markets that it can power really heavy duty things like electric saws, a microwave for up to an hour. I feel like, listen, I don't know much about science and microwaves, but I feel like that's a really intense claim. So it's good to know that this thing can handle a lot of really heavy duty items. Electric drills, electric saws. You like carpentry work? Grow Out's gonna be your best friend. There's 14 different types of outlets, so you can handle a variety of charging needs. For me personally, you know I'm gonna be charging mainly cameras, laptops, things like that. It has AC outlets, DC outlets, USB A ports, USB C ports, and my absolute favorite function a wireless charging pad. Get a load of this. Set your phone down. Charging. <laughs> that is so convenient and so functional. I love that. I love that. As far as inputs for charging on this thing, which we need to get into how fast this thing charges, but first, you have three options. You have your wall charger, you have solar panel input, which you can hook up to 800 watts of solar panels, which is very nice, and then you also have vehicle charging. So charge it as you go, charge it when you stop, hook it up to solar panels, there's different options, whatever works for you. This thing charges so fast, okay? You can charge it from zero to 100% in 1.8 hours. I did charge this unit and my current portable power station that I use daily at the exact same time at a Starbucks last week, okay? I will say this was a clear winner and they're both about the same size. So I really do appreciate the fast charging because if you guys know me, you know I'm impatient, <laughs> okay? Your girl's on a mission, she's got stuff to do. I just wanna get done, I wanna get on the road. So when I stop at Starbucks and I charge these things up, I like it to be quick, you know? Get in, get out. So I really appreciate that function. Also, if you want to hook it up to solar panels, it's going to run you about two and a half hours to get you to 100%, which is actually so fast for solar, isn't it? I feel like that's really quick. This thing has 3,000 life cycles in the battery itself, so that's going to last you about 10 years. And the good thing about it, too, is if for some reason something goes wrong in the first five years, five years, Grow Watt has you covered under warranty, so longevity people. Also side note, it does come with an app too. So if you're a techie person, you like to check your usage, your charging times, all the features and stuff like that on your phone, there is an app that comes with it. I have been using this bad boy over the past week in um, very extreme temperatures too. I've had it in very cold weather and I've had it in very hot weather. I'm currently in 95 degree heat, so if you can see me sweating, no you can't. It does perform very well in both extremes, which I thought was pretty cool because batteries are known to have issues in extreme weather sometimes. Um, and I've dealt with power stations before that don't do well in the cold, so I was happy to see that this one did actually do very well. Listen, in my humble opinion, I really love this unit. I think my favorite thing besides the reliability, the fast charging, and the <laughs> wireless pad that I love and I geek out about, is the design. These handles on the top, I have not seen a design like that, and it's so portable, it's so easy to pick up, and that's 
what I love about it. And if I'm being frank with you guys, I have one too many power stations at the moment. I have three and I only have really room for two in the rig. And I will be keeping this one. So I'm gonna be donating another one that I already have. The grow out will stay with me. So that tells you that I like it, you know? It's also hitting the market at a really great price in my opinion. I think this thing is really cool. I'm gonna leave all the details in the description down below for you guys where you can get it, any sort of sales going on. I also can leave any questions you might have in the comments. But if you're asking me, I really do love this thing. It's got my seal of approval. I think it's super cool. I think it's unique. It doesn't really look like other power stations out there. So yeah, that's me being brutally honest. Thank you Grow Up for sponsoring this video. Morning. That was a quick night, wasn't it? <laughs> I was up super late editing all night, working on something I'm actually very, very passionate about and a problem I'm currently trying to figure out how to fix. I've got to rewind you guys back about five days when I was traveling through Utah trying to get down here to Arizona and I stopped at a gas station to fill up on water and I saw the most heartbreaking thing in the world. A stray mama and her baby puppy. Is there someone we can call for those dogs or is that pretty common to have strays outside? Oh, no, they usually don't come in, but somebody probably dropped them off and they just came inside, probably they're kind of hungry, or... But is there like a shelter nearby we can call for them, or...? Um, in Kianta, which is probably about an hour and 30 minutes. Really? I have my dog with me or I would like take him there, but... This little guy keeps escaping inside. I might take them. Okay. Come on, puppy! Okay, thank you. Hi guys, you want food? You guys want food? Come here. Come on, puppies. Come on. Yeah, hey mama. Come on, puppy. I shall feed you and call you mine. Thanks. I'm trying to figure out what to do because I want to help these guys, but I don't want like diseases getting to my pup, you know? Yeah. Here, mama. You want some water? Want some water, mama? She's got a cut. <laughs> Bubby, it's okay. Well done. Oh, this poor mama. Hi, mama. Good girl. It's okay. It's okay, mama. It's okay. Bubby, I'm gonna get you some food. Want some food? Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. They're covered in ticks and I don't know what other diseases, so I don't feel comfortable putting them in the same... Like, I would just throw, throw them in the truck, but I don't want Blue to catch anything. I can't just leave them. All these animal shelters nearby are closed. Mama, go, go. Mama! Mama dog needs a vet. Blue, hold on. We're trying to save some lives here. I need you to get it together, okay? Be a team player. Why are all of these businesses closed? Hi, I know there's probably nothing you can do, but I'm just looking for a resource. I'm um, near Gooseneck State Park, and um, I'm at a gas station, but I uh, just found three strays and one needs like medical attention. I'm just wondering if you, is it like really common for strays to be out over here? Or is there like an animal shelter I can call of that you know? Everywhere else was closed. No problem, good luck you guys. <laughs> Thank you, bye. <laughs> Crap, what do I do? What do I do, what do I do? Hi puppies. I know, I'm trying to help you. Hey guys. Hi. Hi. You guys know what we did? Animal control or something that we can call for them? Yeah. Yeah. There's some away out. What? You can shoot them. Why would you say that? <laughs> yeah, you're used to me, okay? Yeah. Mm, you're so skinny and you're injured. 
Like, I don't feel right leaving this dog here. How is no one bothered by your condition? You're covered in ticks. You're skinny. Got an injury. Clearly no food or water for a really long time. Clearly one of your dingus puppies is with you. Hi, pup. I know, guys. I'm trying to figure something out. Back up. Not the day for you to make friends. Because your friends are covered in ticks. So. What sucks is I really want to help these dogs, but I cannot risk Blue's health in the process. So unfortunately for me, I don't know what else I can really do. I have like no service. All the vets and pounds are closed. Bobby, what the heck are we supposed to do? Honestly, listen, my moral code is pretty gold standard. I take it very seriously. But I would 100% steal this if it wasn't locked down in order to save the pups. Because my thought was I could just put the dogs in here. Hi, I know, sweetie. I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, you're so cute. Do you want to live with me in a defender? Okay, cool. My thought was I could, this could fit both dogs. So, like, I could get them in there somehow put Blue's collar and leash on and get him in the front seat so he can't have any contact with them, put the cage in the back of the Defender, transport them to an animal hospital. But I just can't. That's like locked down and I don't have bolt cutters. You're so cute. No, guys. <laughs> what do we do? This girl right here. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I need those. Well, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do, so I'm just not, I mean, technically I could just take them, but I'm not willing to risk Blue's health, and who knows how they would react with Blue in the car, so it's just not worth it to me. As sad as it is, um, I guess I'm going to go to camp. This mama dog is literally following the truck. Oh, what do I do? Can I... Maybe I could like make a blockade. Man, that sucks. That sucks. I could not figure out how to save them because like I said, I wasn't willing to put them in the same space as Blue just in case there was any disease that Blue could catch. But I still really wish there was something I could have done and I went back the next day and I couldn't find them so Ever since then, I've just honestly been heartbroken and trying to figure out what I can do because the amount of strays that are in between the Arizona and Utah border are insane. Like, they're just everywhere. I saw maybe 12 on just my way out. But like I said, it's been on my mind and I've been working on a solution. I know obviously I can't save every stray dog out there, but I feel like something needs to be done. And when I want to do something, I'm really a go-getter. If I decide I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure something out, I'm gonna figure it out, so. I'm trying to get these dogs some help, but I have a very important phone call. I have a very important phone call in about an hour with somebody who's willing to help me, but I need to get into better cell phone coverage before I do that. So uh, let's pack up camp and go take this call because I am prepared and willing to do something. It's time to save some puppies. Hi, this is Maria. Oh, hi Maria, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm pretty good. I'm very excited about the email that you sent me. Me too. It it's, sounds it's, like it's gonna be really awesome. Yeah, it's pretty ambitious, but I think we can get a lot done. Okay, awesome, great. Um, well, thank you so much for reaching out to us and thank you so much for like wanting to help. Um, of course. Our mission wouldn't be possible without people like you, you know, that see these things and care. So, thank you. Yeah, of course. I'm super excited. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good day. Awesome. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> We're going to save the puppies.
We're gonna save all your friends, Bob. <laughs>